There's a shocking amount of racial strife in the United States and across the world today. Shocking for several reasons. First, as a world society, we should be beyond these problems. But second, the answers to the questions people are asking have been in front of us for a long time, yet many people still have not heard a good answer to why we have racial tensions. Now, what I'm about to say, I'm certainly not trying to microaggress anyone, and I'm not trying to insult or denigrate anyone. I wouldn't do that. But I am gonna say a few things that maybe aren't politically correct and maybe challenge some of you. Now, if you're a Christian, I hope you will at least listen to what I'm saying because some of our ideas are very outdated and a lot of my friends hold ideas that don't hold water anymore and we need to get rid of them. If you're not a Christian, just listen to what I say and maybe I can explain to you uh, where we're coming from in this racial debate right now. Now, this is a little tricky for me because obviously I am a European male and I am the, uh, the focus of a lot of aggression and a lot of distrust right now, but I'm gonna do my best just to lay my cards on the table and give you a, a straight from the heart, my best approach, my best answer to the questions that we're asking right now. Now, I have written a lot on the subject. You can find my articles on creation.com. There'll be links in the show notes, biblicalgenetics.com, or just go to creation.com, type in Carter races or Carter or something like that, and my articles will pop up. One of them, extensive mixing among Israelites and non-Israelites in biblical history. That was a shocking article that I wrote because, you know, we all want to know, you know, what's a Jew, where the Jews come from, and questions like that. And I thought that in the Bible, there might be maybe three or four examples of when a Jew married a non-Jew. I found hundreds. I found so many that the only conclusion I could draw was that there is no such thing as Jewish DNA. There's Middle Eastern DNA. And the Middle Eastern DNA, it happens because all the people in the Middle East have blended over time. Add a little bit of Africans because they're very close to Africa, a little bit of India, a little bit of Europe, and you have Middle Eastern peoples. And the Jewish people, according to the Bible itself, are a mixture. I wrote a follow-up article called The Genetic History of the Israelite Nation, where I looked at the genes found in Jewish people today, and it is clear that they come from a Middle Eastern stock. Now, even the ones who have lived far away from the Middle East for many centuries, they have integrated and intermarried with the local people. That is true, but they still have a Middle Eastern core of their genetics. No, there was not some massive um, conversion of the Khazars and the Khazar Empire in Asia in ancient times that led to the Ashkenazi Jews. That's actually not true. The genetics tells us that the Jews actually came from the Middle East. Recently, I wrote an article called Racial Mixing is Perfectly Biblical. Oh, that's going to challenge some of you because you might think that maybe it's best if you don't marry someone from a different race. And my answer is, it doesn't matter. Yeah, there's some cultural struggles you might have, but you know what? The young people in America especially have decided that this is not important anymore. I live in West Georgia. Now, West Georgia historically has been a hotbed of suppression of a certain minority group. Yeah, the African Americans have not had a good time of it in this area of the country. And yet everywhere I go in this area, just few miles down the road that way, a few miles down the road that way, I see mixed race couples all the time and mixed race children all the time. So really the racism in our culture is coming from older people, not so much younger people, which is encouraging, which means that there's some hope for some reconciliation and some getting over some of the hurt. And there's been generations of hurt. I'm not trying to denigrate the experience of the African-Americans the Hispanics, the say non-European males in America or in other places in the world, there's been a lot of really bad things that have happened and there's a lot of healing that still needs to be done. But according to the Bible, racial mixing is perfectly biblical. Link in the show notes. Another article that I wrote was called Inbreeding and the Origin of Races. And what I did was I looked at the family tree of the 12 tribes of Israel. I simply took Terah, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob, the father of the 12 tribes. And I looked at their family tree and I tracked how many lineages from those 12 sons 
went back to terror in how many different directions? Because Abraham married his half-sister, Sarah. Their child, Isaac, was genetically the same as their brother because they got a double dose of grandpa's DNA. He was genetically like a brother. He married his first cousin, once removed, and first cousin twice removed because his wife is descended from both of Abraham and Sarah's brothers. And their son, Jacob, married his first cousins, Rachel and Leah, and two women who we don't know their ancestry. By the time you get down to the end, those 12 brothers had a huge fraction of their great, 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 whatever grandfather's DNA, Terra, a huge fraction. And because of the laws of genetics, they would have inherited a lot of that in two identical copies. So because this family interbred with itself for four or five generations in a row, that level of inbreeding is gonna create a people who are distinct. They're gonna look different. You could literally be walking down the, some ancient village street and point out an Israelite out of the crowd because he's gonna look different than someone from a different cultural group because of inbreeding. This is where races come from. It was after the Tower of Babel, when people spread out across the world, they became separated from one another. And that separation allowed them with inbreeding to lose a lot of genetic diversity, plus add mutations on top of that, and they're picking up new genetic diversity, different than other people groups. And so they started to look different. This is really not a big deal at all. The reason races if I even use the term, the term doesn't have a definition anymore, but if I can use the term in the old fashioned sense, the reason so-called races exist was because people have been isolated from one another. They haven't been freely mixing across the planet because the people over here can't have babies with the people over here. They're too far away until modern times with modern travel and racial barriers are falling very quickly. Another article I wrote called Skin Color Surprises. I looked at the genetics of skin color as according to modern geneticists. And this has been a big shock because in the past, we didn't know what caused skin color. We didn't know what genes drove the skin color of the Central Africans, the Southern Indians, the Melanesians living in the islands of the Pacific, the Native Americans, the Asians, the Europeans. We figured out light skin colors pretty quickly. There's a couple of genes that have the, the biggest influence, but it took us a little longer to figure out what caused dark skin pigmentation. And when we did that, we realized that the same exact genetic variants that caused people in Central Africa to have dark skin also exist in Southern India, also exist in Melanesia and amongst the Australian Aboriginals. In other words, those genes didn't need to evolve more than once. In other words, they were in our population before we spread out. They were at the Tower of Babel. Oh, we don't need evolution to explain the origin of races. We just need a little bit of genetic diversity into that original population that spreads out and gets separated from one another. And boom, there's your recipe right there. Another article that I wrote, could Adam and Eve have given rise to all the races? And in this article, I asked the question, how much genetic diversity is in people across the world? And how much genetic diversity would have had to have been placed in Adam and Eve? And the answer is, not very much. There are about 10 million common variants found in all people groups across the world. 10 million. You carry about 3 million. So all Adam and Eve would have to do is carry maybe 10 to 20 million, allowing for some loss over time. And they don't have to be super duper different than everyone else. They just are very diverse within themselves. And as they start having children, those children are gonna pop out with all sorts of different gen combinations. And then we have the flood and the whole population gets really small. And then after Tower of Babel, when it spreads out, all the Adam and Eve diversity spreads across the planet. Something else that modern geneticists have discovered is the fact that there aren't any genetic variants that completely separate one people group from another. So sure, there are variants that are really common in Europe and there's some variants that are really common in Africa or China but they're not found in 100% of Europeans, they're not found in 100% of Africans or 100% of Native Americans. They're just common. There are actually zero genes that completely separate people. There are millions of genes we all share and none that only some of us have on a large population scale. Now I have some mutations that no one else in the world has, 
My family has mutations that no other family has. The, my ancestral people groups have some mutations that no one else has, but once you get beyond the village size, then there's no gene where you can absolutely pinpoint a specific person and where they came from. I reviewed a book a little while ago by a famous journalist called Nicholas Wade. He's a, a reporter, he's an author, and he wrote this book called A Troublesome Inheritance, Genes, Race, and Human History. Now, my review is on creation.com. It is not very friendly. I give it a very harsh review. I gave it a tremendous thumbs down. He was bringing up some ideas that just don't hold water. He was trying to explain the origin of races through an evolutionary process of selection for things that can't be selected. Because most traits are called polygenic. More than one gene controls a trait. Now, something like your blood type, that's Mendelian. It's easy, you have A, B, and O, and depending on how it's recombinations, and you can get an A, B, an A, a B, or an O, Easy genetics. Almost all other traits, though, are polygenic. So something like height. There's no gene for height. There are dozens of genes that affect your height. And, of course, the environment affects your height because the amount of diet, uh, the amount of exercise and the diet that you have profoundly reshapes your bones. There's no genes for intelligence. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of genes that affect how intelligent a person is. And then you have to throw in socioeconomic factors. The single biggest predictor of academic performance is socioeconomic background, not genes. If you could give all the different people in the world the same cultural background, they will all even out as far as their, their academic advancement and achievement goes. Because cultural expectations, nutrition, economic drive, economic opportunities, those are the main things that affect how a person operates in the world. It's not your genes. There have been several other papers that I haven't written, but I was the editor of, and they've recently appeared on creation.com. I worked really hard with the author to, to you know, give a good presentation from his viewpoint, but I did help with this. One of them was called, Was There a Curse of Ham? Now I tell you what, I grew up in New York, and when I came to Georgia Tech to go to college, I was absolutely shocked when I heard coming out of some Christians' mouths that Africans are black because God cursed Ham. I had never heard that before, and I am still mystified how anyone can believe that because God cursed Canaan, not Ham. Canaan didn't live in Africa. The Canaanites were the people the Israelites later displaced when they invaded Canaan land. We now call that Israel and Palestine. There was no curse of Ham. Get it out of your mind. You can actually go back a couple of episodes ago. I talked about that at length in a, in a different episode. Another article recently came out. Racial reconciliation, where do we begin? That's a good question, isn't it? Well, I submit to you the place we should begin is the Bible. The Bible explains where people come from. The Bible explains the origin of the so-called races. The Bible explains that we all descend from Adam, and all people across the world are the same distance from Adam. Maybe 150 to 200 generations, that's it. That's all of human history. Let me read to you Colossians 3.11. This is a very important verse for a biblical understanding of races and our positions in the world in reference to each other. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. You see, in Christ, there are no racial divisions. We are all equal. We are all descended from the same people, and we are all related to Jesus Christ, who's also called the kinsman redeemer. That's funny because if he's my kinsman redeemer, I'm not Jewish. That means that he's my kin through not Jewish lineage, but through Adam. All people across the world are related to Christ in Adam. And that's critically important when we realize that we all have equal status in the eyes of God. This is why we should have equal status in the eyes of the law. This is why we should have equal status in the eyes of education and economics. It's because in Christ, in God's eyes, we're all the same. Therefore, how dare we treat one another differently? We're all in the same boat. In fact, 
the Bible clearly teaches there is but one race. It's really funny. The creationists have been saying this at least since the 70s, definitely since the 80s, since I started listening to them. This whole one blood, one race idea is really strong within creation. It's really strong within the Bible. And yet today, this message is more important than ever. Because honestly, there are two groups of people, the saved and the lost, the fallen and the redeemed, the sons and daughters and the heirs of eternity, and the lost people who are at enmity with God. That is the difference. We should be reaching out our hand to people to try to help them up, yes, but while we're doing it, we should also be telling them about Jesus Christ and what He does for people, because He saved me. My friends, I'm not a Jew. I am as different from Jewish people as a Southern African, as a Chinese person, as an Australian Aboriginal. And if I'm not Jewish and I can be saved, that means God had mercy on me. When I look at my ancestry, I look at the history of the barbarian stock that I came from, and I cringe. It's gross. Those people were wicked. And yet, my God reached down and He picked a wicked person. That's me. A person who has no business being called in the number that Jesus Christ is going to save. And yet He did anyway. And it's an amazing thing. And so, if nothing else, as we're struggling to discuss this issue of race in our culture, let's not forget to tell people about Jesus and the work that He can do in a person's heart. I know what I used to be like. I know what I still am like. And I don't like me very much. And yet, my God loves me. He loves you too. And that's the message that we should be giving to everyone. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed that. This is Biblical Genetics. Please go to our website, biblicalgenetics.com. Give us a like, give us a share, thumbs up. We really appreciate it. If you'd like to sponsor us, I have the Buy Me A Coffee app turned on on my website. You can easily just go there, click on the link, and just throw me a couple of dollars. Helps me power my way through all this technology and late nights and editing. Anyway, you fans are awesome. You non-fans, you're pretty cool too. Don't hate me too much. And I'm actually, um, I'm already anticipating some of the races that are going to pounce upon me in the comment section. Bring it on, because I've got answers. If you want to ask me a real question, you can do so. Creation.com, contact us, Biblical Genetics, click on the contact us, or um, just make a comment in the YouTube video or on the podcast if you're listening online. Thank you much. See you soon.